give you a little background about myself before we get started. I was a John Deere field service technician for 20 years. After sustaining a back injury in 1995, I went back to college and retrained in computer science and had a major in networking and code development. I started working for Providence Health and Services in 1997. I was hired by the medical director of Providence Health and Services, Dr. Dick Gibson. Dr. Gibson is the former CIO of Legacy Health Systems. At the time, Dr. Gibson was starting a new endeavor. He called it clinical informatics. I was one of the first two people that began the infancy of today's clinical informatics team for Providence Health and Services. In 2001, I was the first person to accomplish the ability of making EEG information viewable and readable on the web. After three years in clinical informatics role, I moved over into the web development team that was newly forming. I became the first web engineer for Providence Health and Services. Over the years, I have managed over 799 SharePoint sites, 659 front page sites, along with 200 custom web applications, both internally facing and externally facing. So enough about me. Let's begin. The first application I'm going to show you is called Cedar. As you can imagine, administrating over all these websites and multiple servers that I've just mentioned is a daunting task for one person. So it didn't take me long to decide that there was, there must be a better way to hold all the information that I needed at any given time and also be able to share this information across all of Providence. There was a standing joke with my development team members that if I ever got hit by a train, Providence would be in a world hurt because of the knowledge that would be lost. I'm sure right now you may be thinking to yourself that you have people just like me in your organization, or maybe it's even you. So my question to you is, what would happen if that information was lost in your company? What is the cost of this knowledge that could be lost to your company? I needed a solution, and IronSpeed was my answer. I built this web application inventory database, and I named it Cedar. The benefit of Cedar for us is that we have the help desk that uses it and also the web team, network team, server team, all the teams use it and maybe they have a trouble ticket or something and they can look up a web application and just by typing two letters you can see that Iron Speed automatically does type ahead and can find the information that you're looking for. And so I can look at this application. Nice to show an error in it. Let me go back. Murphy's Law, I guess. There we go. And as you can see, it returns all the information about this web application. I can drill down deeper into the application into a view only. This presents another presentation view of the information that is stored about this application. In this current view of Cedar, we're using tabs and you can see that I've kind of broken the information rather than a real long list of all the information we need. I've kind of broke it down in sections so that if the help desk was looking for who to assign this ticket to, they could just click assign to. If I need to know all the info, IIS information and how to set it up on a web server, I could just click the IIS tab. Another out-of-the-box feature that Iron Speed delivers 
is filters. Thus, to go back to the first page that we saw at the beginning, I could click this filter on domains. And these are all the domains that I manage over. So if I wanted, if a manager or a director came to me and said, I want to know all the web applications on a certain server, there's one click and I have 113 web applications on this server. And if I wanted to uh, send a report back to them, IronSpeed also has the filters or the the Excel built in, the Word built in, and Acrobat Adobe built in to the application so you don't have to add a third party uh, Microsoft Office to your server. It's all incorporated in the application. So in one click I can pull all the web applications into an Excel file and I can send it off to whoever needed the information. This saves a lot of time. Another way of presenting the same information in the newer version of Cedar, I'll show you the new IronSpeed 10.03 version that I'm working on. And it's a little bit different, but it still has the same information. Right away you can see that we're only looking at the website name, the type of uh, application it is, is it a web service, is it a web application, is it a third party app. Uh, Providence is in five states, so we want to know is this app only used for Oregon, is it enterprise wide, what tier level of support is it, and so we can quickly see that information right here. Another thing I speak changed in 10.03 is the filtering. Before you had the filters that I showed you laid out, they've kind of incorporated into this drop down, so it's kind of out of the way unless you need it. That gives you a little bit more real estate on your web page. We have the Word, Excel, and Adobe still here, and that's also in a drop down box. Um, for us, we like to leave it out because we use it all the time, so we present it to the customer. Another feature that's built in IronSpeed, if you have join tables, is it'll go in and attach to the join tables and you'll see it in this expand and collapse feature. So from here I can see all this information. But let me, let me go back to the one that we were just showing in the previous one. Here I have two applications. I have a demo and I have the production version. And when I go into this one now, I've broken it down to where the dependencies, uh, everything about the application I can see right away. If I want to know what database and database server that this application uses, in one click I can see all the like, production servers, staging, QC and development. I can see any dependencies that the application uses. All the web servers that this application is on and what environment. I can get all the information which is what we saw in the previous one laid out a little bit different but it's all here for everyone to see. And then I made like a knowledge base for the information. So 
the promotion documentation or anything quirky about the application, anything I need to know about the application I can build in here. And IronSuite has a built-in upload feature to where you can put Word documents and Excel and things like that into the database. And then you can bring it back in. I need to log in to get to this page. One sec. And then once it's in the database, you can pull it up from there. And so if I didn't know anything about this application, whether I'm help desk or another web engineer or developer, now I can pull all the information about that application and read through and maybe get the information that I need to fix the problem. So I've kind of ran through this quite quickly. Um, as you can see also, once I logged into the application, Iron Speed, you can granularly uh, set permissioning. And when we first came into this application, I was able to kind of go around until I had to get to that document and then I logged in. But before you couldn't see the edit and deletes because they weren't accessible to you until you were logged in. Once you're logged in, if you had the permissions to add or edit or delete, you'd be able to see the icons to do that work. Same way with uh, any of these pages that I had here, a lot of this stuff you wouldn't have been able to see until once you were logged in. So I'm going to stop for a moment and uh, see if there's any questions off of what we just did. I do have a couple questions for you, Wayne. Um, here's a question from John P. John asks, do you need to have Microsoft Office installed on the client machine in order to use the button clicks for Word or Excel, etc.? No, you do not. Um, IronSpeed has that all built into the application, so it's part of the application. Um, that's one of the beauties that I like about it. Being a web engineer, one of my biggest concerns is, from a security standpoint, I don't want to expose all these Microsoft Office vulnerabilities into my web server. And then every time you're doing uh, semantic updates and things like that, they're always going off and you've got to figure out the problem. Uh, with IronSpeed applications, you don't have to deal with any of that. Okay, we've got one more from John here. Um, he asks, do you manually enter the data into the application's database or do you populate the data automatically by inspecting metadata from the operating system? So you can do both. Um, normally we import the data. We go through a deployment process for our applications and so there's a deployment form that has all the fields that, that you see. When a developer is deploying up to production, they will fill out this deployment policy and it fills in all this information so it's already there before we go into the uh, production. But, however, if, if you had um, Excel and maybe you had all the information from an Excel spreadsheet, maybe it came from an access database previously or you're migrating all the information to use in IronSpeed. IronSpeed also has an import export feature to where you could import that Excel spreadsheet into the database table and bring it in the information that way. All right, uh, we have a question here from Lisa C. And Lisa asks, are you using standard IronSpeed security in the Cedar app? <laughs> Trick question. Uh, yes and no. IronSpeed has uh, Active Directory um, option to where you can 
use your Active Directory if you're using Active Directory. And in Cedar, we're using Active Directory. So therefore, we're leveraging um, the permissioning through IronSpeed and setting it up, but still using our Active Directory. All we have to do is point to our Active Directory, find our groups that we want to permission, whether it's an icon, whether it's the, maybe you don't want anybody to be able to pull an Excel uh, report, so you would hide that except for maybe administrators to be able to do that. And so we permission that icon with the group from Active Directory. That said, IronSpeed also uses um, database uh, permissioning roles and security. And you can use a database if you don't have Active Directory or you choose not to use Active Directory. You can create a role-based security doing the same thing. Okay, this sounds like a very similar question to the one that you just answered. So uh, you have the option to say the answer is the same. But Luan T asks, is IronSpeed getting the information from Active Directory? I like having a central location for managing apps. Yes. Same question? Um, well, the answer would be yes. It, it's using Active Directory in order to present to the user what, what they're able to see in Cedar. Um, there's a couple other applications as we go through that are um, role-based, and, and I'll show you when I get to that, and you won't even know the difference. OK. Um, Lawan also asks, um, is the deployment form built using IronSpeed? Yes. In fact, it's the same form that was created. I just made a copy, changed the name, and then presented on the uh, on the on the web page as um, a deployment form. In the new Cedar, I don't have that, but if I go back to the old Cedar, you'll see code promotion questionnaire. And all it is is the same thing. It's just um, an ad page for this table. It's just called something different, so they don't know. No sense in, you know, redoing the wheel. Okay, I have a question here from Brian R. who asks, what database backends are supported? Uh, I can actually answer that one. The four databases that IronSpeed supports um, are Microsoft SQL Server, uh, Microsoft Access, MySQL, and Oracle. Um, when I don't know if you want to answer kind of which one you guys typically use. Is that, is that a decent question? Uh, sure. Um, we use everything but MySQL. Um, another benefit of IronSpeed is that you can take an access database and there's thousands of them out there, especially in big systems, even like in Providence. There's thousands of access databases that people have been using to do their work, you know, gathering information or whatever. And then, boom, now they, they need something to where they're not locking out of the access database or have to put permissions on a file share to get to the access database. So they need something web-based. IronSpeed can run against that access database and, and literally without doing any work at all, four minutes, and you have a web application that's accessible to anybody. Now, of course, you're going to go back and make changes to the pages and where you want um, certain fields to go, and you might have to name certain names of the labels or things like that. But you can actually just, in three, four minutes, bring an access database up to a web application that anyone can see, and we do, and we do do that a lot when when um, it's not big enough that it really needs to be on a SQL Server or there isn't any backup that they need to have on it. You know, it's not that important. Then we can provide that service to them very quickly. 
So, right. um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say maybe we should move on a little bit and save some of these questions for a little bit later if we could. Well, I have I have one more about Cedar specifically, and then okay. the other ones I'll save uh, for the next question session. Okay. Um, Stephen S. asks if you are using a single database for Cedar. Yes. Fair enough. Okay. Um, I uh, what I'll do is I will um, continue to save up these questions, and the next time that we stop to ask uh, if there are any questions. We'll start answering them then. Okay. So the next application I would like to show you is our security service application. And before I log in here, I want to show over to the right. You can see here IronSpeed has this feature built in as well to where you can either show all three of these, remember username, remember password, automatically sign in. You could show all three of these checkboxes or none of them or maybe even one. Maybe you don't want to type in your username all the time, but you don't want to save the password. So you could check, you know, remember username. So you can use any of these three and it saves it in a cookie for you. This is also, as you can see, an active directory to get into. And what this application does is it stores all the information of all the employees and their vehicles so that um, maybe there's a parking garage and this person unbeknownst to them, some, some black truck that has left our lights on and run down his battery. They can come in and they can see right away, well, Wayne Hussey owns that Dodge truck. And now from here, they can either contact that employee and let them know that their lights are on or maybe they're not parked correctly. Or because they're not parked correctly, over on the left-hand side, you'll see um, all these pages here then they could issue a citation. So we have kind of two parts in this application. One is the registration part where the employees register the vehicles so we know who they are in case we need to get a hold of them. But also if um, there's any kind of citation that needs to be written for the way they parked or they were parking in a 15 minute zone and they've been there for three days, you know, something like that. So this is what we use that application for. Now if I was to go in here and issue a citation, the security officer would come in here and they would look for uh, BNC 289 because that was the license plate. Now over here on this get info, when I click the get info, now we're drawing from a web service within IronSpeed. So there's a web service that's built and I'm just leveraging that web service into this IronSpeed application. So it's going to go up, well, let me take that back. I'm, I'm ahead of myself here. Actually what I'm doing when I click this button, I'm going to the registration table and pulling, I'm looking for that license plate, I pull the license plate and I bring that information, as you can see, now it's filled out all the information about me so the security officer didn't have to fill it in. And then all they have to do is come down and, you know, and fill out the relevant things, you know, what campus, what facility location. Oh, looky there, I got 10 current violations. Hmm. I shouldn't be testing this app so often. So, now that that's all done, they filled it all out. When they click the Save button, now I'm going to use that web service I was mentioning earlier. It's, it's going to go into the web service. It's going to pull the information out of Active Directory, and it's going to grab my email address 
for Wayne Hussey. And it's going to pull the information out of these columns that I want to present in a letter, in an email, and pre-populate them. And then it's also going to go look up my manager that's assigned to me, and it's going to send him a, a notice that I got a ticket. So over the time, this, this application is... Um, say probably two FTEs for Providence over the past five or six years using this application because before they would have to write it down on a on a book ticket book then they'd have to come into the office then they'd have to go look the person up manually then they would have to write a letter email letter to both and send it off and so now it's, it's much quicker and more efficient for them to do the work that they need to do. The next application is what we call the hospice web orders. And let me go to that one here. Give me a second here to build. So now this application is not Active Directory. This is actually role-based security here. As you can see, the username password is the same. Everything looked the same. It still see, shows me here signed in, but you can't tell from the front end what you're using. What I wanted to show you about the HME web orders is that it's just more the the way that we presented the information just a little bit different and some of the things that we've done. If I search for Hussey, as you can see right away it found one and it also has the, the birth date. So we've taken a query and extended the search functionality to where I'm looking up, in this case, a patient, but I'm also going and looking up their birth date so that I can, maybe there's two Wayne Husseys and one's born in 1968. I want to pick the right one. So this kind of gives us the opportunity to to get the right patient that we're looking for. And then we'll go look them up. And I just want to mention another thing about the application before I dig in a little more. This application replaces the paper, the HME intake fax referral form. It was used by hospice organizations to order medical equipment from Providence HME. Before this application was built, the home and medical equipment team had to take these orders by faxes. Then they had to enter them into a database. In the latest version, we'll be incorporating the smartphone technology so that the delivery driver will be able to update the deliveries once he's dropped them off. And then the HME hospice will be able to see that that order's been delivered and that they're on their next uh, delivery. This application has a number of custom code features and modified store procedures that we've changed or enhanced from what IronSpeed has. The database has, um, we've changed the classes and, and modified manipulated the classes in IronSpeed so that the return data is based off of the user's permission at runtime of the queries. So no matter where they are in the application, they can only see their, their information. 
so as you can see right now, we, we pulled up uh, this patient, Wayne Hussey, me, and I can view the information, I can edit it, and I can delete it because I'm logged in. We have the expand and collapse, like you've seen before in the new seater, but there's a little bit of some differences. Now we have the tabs going across, and we're pulling from specific tables that are joined to this patient. So now I can see at a glance that Wayne Hussey, there's, there's been an order and two order items placed, and they're in the status of delivery requested. Sometimes in the hospice side, they want to know if what was given to the person is a rental. In this case, the bed alarm is a rental or what has been purchased by the patient. And in this case, the ear protector was a purchase. So even though we have the two order items there, now they can drill a little bit more and know whether all these items are rental or all these items are purchased. Another thing that we've added is for this list of equipment on orders here, this information we've pulled in from another table and laid it into the orders table so that we've joined the order and the order items together, which out of the box Iron Speed wouldn't do in this uh, look and feel that we're tr trying to get or, or what the hospice HMEs wanted. So this is we've modified. Um, another thing that you can do is we've, um, one of the other requests was as you can see here in this column, we've color-coded the type of status. So an urgent requested is, is red, delivery requested is green, pickup schedule is blue, canceled has no color so it's white. So they wanted to be able to see from a color standpoint on, on their process of the way they work. They wanted to be able to see this color, so we were able to, through the style sheets, pull this information into a cell based off of that status. The last application that I want to show you is what we call the, call the SID. This application is Active Directory. And in their presentation, they didn't want anything to come up when you first logged in. They wanted to be able to, to go wherever they wanted to go. This application is used by myself, Web Engineering, um, the server team the network team, and the infrastructure team. So the server team would use the server inventory database. The data network team, they have their own specific things that they need to look for. Um, and the same way with the domain search, they have certain things that they're looking for from the infrastructure side of things. So. Cedar and SID were kind of built with the same thing in mind. If we take a look real quickly just to show you the server inventory, they're keeping track of all the information that they need to see. And if we look down here, we can see right away that they have 6,524 servers. Well, no one's going to be able to remember what servers what without this application. But they like filters. And as you can see here, there must be 10 filters on this. I can search off of, um, if I wanted to look up my engineer, I could look up all the, all the web servers that this engineer has assigned to him. So 
So right now you can see he has 145 servers that he takes care of. Now if you're the manager or director for server team and you wanted to know how many servers that this one server engineer had or who owns a server that's maybe having a problem so you can get a hold of them to have them try to resolve the issue, he can quickly go in here and, and capture that information. And they like to filter off of so many things that that's their own baby. They can also filter off of a from date to a to date as well. With this application here, another notable thing is, is that it's been highly customized for CSS or style sheets. It's still 99.9% .9 iron speed that built this, but they've taken it a step further and colored the headers and colored the background here and colored this, this column and this column and this engineer's name and uh, bolded the server IPs and things like that. So you, you can really do a lot of changing with the application. Another example of that is, let me show you this form here. This is the DNS request form that we use. So any domain request for the whole organization would go through here. As you can see, this one's laid out completely different than anything else that I presented today. You have a lot of information over here rather than text boxes. Uh, the background of the cells are colored. Uh, the drop downs are colored, et cetera, et cetera. But the point I'm trying to make of is that you're not locked into one look and feel with Iron Speed. Iron Speed gives you the crud and the presentation of a look and feel, but then you can manipulate that look and feel for however you want it to be. And Iron Speed writes in, uh, you can either choose VB or C Sharp. So you can extend the functionality of what Iron Speed gives you by using, you know, a, a C Sharp developer or a VB developer, they can extend with custom coding the application to whatever you want. I mentioned the uh, portal and um, I'd just like to take a, a moment and kind of explain my concept of, of what the portal is or what I I call portal. You saw in the web applications how we have all the web applications and um, so for the web team we use this as a portal. If we need to do the code promotion, boom, we have it here. If we want to go to change management and and fill out our change management forms which are required before we promote any application, I can click that and I can go into the change management form and fill it out. Um, my weekly status. Um, if I want to go to SharePoint and look at my SharePoint uh, website, I can click this link here and I can go into my team SharePoint site to do whatever I need to do there. If I want to go to the SID, which I already showed you, I can click and boom, there I go. Or I can go to DNS team, which I just showed you, and there I go. So from a web engineering standpoint, I have one web page and all the information that I need to get to on a daily basis, I just go to one place. I don't have to have 20 links going all over the place to try to get to what I need to get to. I can just present it on my portal page. It's the same way with the SID. They need all this information here in different, you know, different forms. So they would go to one of these links and that's where their information is. They don't have to try to go somewhere else to try to find it or to remember where it's at. 
So hopefully that you know kind of clarifies some things with that. So it's 8:42. Um, I think I'm going to stop here and take some more questions to make sure we have enough time to get through. Okay, Wayne, this is Jill. I've come in for Brendan, just so everyone knows, and you're not taken aback by the change in the voice. So the first question I have is from John. Do you use inline procedures or stored procedures? So there were multiple applications that I showed you this morning, and Cedar is inline. Uh, SID is inline. The HME Web Orders app that I showed you is Store Procedures. The HME Web Orders is Store Procedures. I may have just said that. So two of the apps were Store Procedures. The rest were inline. And that's a matter of preference, I think. Um, you know, what you're comfortable with or what, what do you want to do. The only time I personally ever use the store procedures is that when I want to make sure if, if the application is being used very heavily, and let's say somebody opens it up just like an Excel spreadsheet would be, it's going to come back and say, hey, you just made some changes to your Excel spreadsheet. Do you, do you want to override them or leave it alone and then come back and, and do it again? With the store procedure, it it does a checksum of the value. So if you went to save that page or, or an edit that you did, it's going to see that that checksum had changed, and so it's going to alert you and tell you, hey, somebody else changed this before you did. You know, what do you want to do? But as a rule, you know, generally I just do inline. It's um, mainly because in our uh, environment, I can make changes if it's inline. I can make changes to the application, and I don't have to do something with the, the database. If I make changes to the store procedures, now when I do my change, change management, now I have to get a DBA involved, and then the DBA has to make the changes to the store procedures. But that's our environment. Maybe in your environment you don't have to do that, so it may not be a big deal. Okay, the next question I have is, is there a standard search facility within IronSpeed that will search every table in a database app and display possible results? This is different from the search examples you've shown today. Could you repeat that, Joe, one more time? Sure. Is there a standard search facility within IronSpeed that will search every table in a database app and display possible results. This is different from the search examples you've shown today. Gotcha. So what you're, I believe what you're asking is, um, is to be able to search all the tables in a database and try to find something. I don't have an answer for that. I know that in the newer versions of uh, Iron Speed, they have the capability of doing um, full text search, but I don't know if that crosses over to every table with full text search. Um, I would, Jill, put that aside and we can try to find the correct answer for that. Certainly. I've never had to use that, so I don't know. Okay. The next question is from Lawan. Wayne, is there a module for incident reports? We have a state we have state run hospitals that are required to track incidents involving our clients that is abuse, altercations, or injury. And he's asking if we have one? Well, yeah, he says, is there a module for incident reports? Okay. So I, that's how I read it. He's asking okay. if you have one. So we do. I can't, I can't really show you that one. Um, as far as module, I think what you're asking for is what you would do, and that, and that 
is a good example of one that was being done with an access database. And we've moved it to a SQL database. So A, we have the um, security of being able to have backups in case something happened to the information, we would have it in a backup. The second thing is, is that I think what you're asking is to be able to audit and audit the incident, who put the incident in, um, that kind of thing. So it's not really a module, it'd just be something that you would build from within IronSpeed the way that you would want it. If okay, that didn't answer, he can ask for more. Sorry, Wayne, I, I stepped on, your, on you there. Um, the next question I have is from Stephen. I notice you have many drop-down lists which selector method are you using for large lists? If it is the new ISD method, what are your users saying about the process of selection from large lists? So in all the ones that I presented today, um, I'm just using the older built-in uh, large list selector of IronSpeed. And normally, I just set that out to you know, 500 so I don't have to deal with not having the information there. Um, the new arch list selector, I'm assuming that you're talking about the uh, type ahead and the lookup. And if that's the case, I have um, in the newer versions, I'm, up, I'm upgrading the applications, so I don't have any feedback from them on that yet. So I, I couldn't really answer the question on how the customers like it because I haven't implemented that into a production app yet. Kevin asks, is the citation number automatically generated? And if so, where is this done? So in SQL, you have um, the uh, auto increment. So we can use that in our ticket if we wanted to and, and just whatever the next record would be would be the ticket number. Um, however, they put it, I believe, currently right now, the way the application is, is that they fill out a hard ticket and leave it on the vehicle. And then they have the copy and then the copy is put into the database and then the ticket sent out. In the new version, I've incorporated a, um, a third-party uh, tool to where now they can just scan. Um, on, on our vehicles, we have a little sticker that we get that we have to put on our cars. And we can scan that barcode, and it'll automatically bring back all the information for that, that, the person that owns the vehicle. And so they can click the button and send a ticket, and it's automatically put into the database, and they don't have to bring the, the copy of the ticket in and then manually put it into the database. So that's the, um, the feature from the newer versions of Iron Speed being able to use the mobile applications that are built into Iron Speed. We've been able to incorporate that. Right now, that is in um, in test, so I didn't show that. Okay, the next question I have is from Brian. I noticed that the way the data is presented is in a form, not a table list. Is it possible to show a list of records instead of a form? Hmm. Wayne? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of what he's asking for. Is he, okay. he is he not wanting to see the the lines from each each row that's returned, and he just wants like a page? It looks like a blank page with all that information in there. If that's the case, then you can hide the the uh, cell outline, and so it would just look white with all the information in there. Okay, the next question I have is from John. Do you use a many-to-many -many between patient and address information, 
or do you enter the address information into each patient record? Husband and wife have the same address as an example. So in our case, this one is um, the address is to the patient. So if there is a husband and a wife, and there, so they would be two different records, they would have the same address. That would just be normal for us. We wouldn't think much of it. So yes, we would have two records with the address. Okay, the next question is from Sarah. For hospice web orders website, how do you grant permissions to the different buttons, such as edit and delete, to different user groups? So we do it the same as all the other applications for the buttons. The buttons are based off of the role. So you permission off of the role that you've granted the, the person or individual that's using the application. In Active Directory, you, it would be the same thing. You would be um, providing a group or a role to a button. And there's some uh, videos on the IronSpeed website that will show you, you know, the granting of permissions and how to do that. Okay, the next question I have is from Eddie. I noticed that you're using multiple versions of IronSpeed Designer for each application. How do you manage updating applications to the next version? <laughs> well, that's a good question. I try to keep them really all up to date. Um, you're correct in that you caught that on the applications I always put the version. I build the version into the application so that I know what version I'm using. Because you're right, you know, there might be two versions of Iron Speed in a year come out. And so I want to know what version I'm on so that I grab the right Iron Speed to pull the application up in. Uh, normally my process is, is as soon as the version comes out, I start uh, upgrading the application. The only time I don't really upgrade the application is if I know that we're going to be doing something in the near future that is uh, Maybe it's a whole new rework. Maybe they want it. they've used it for a year or two, and, and now they want a whole different way of presenting the data. Now that they're used to what they get, or maybe their processes have changed. But yeah, that is a, it's a good question. But what I've found, um, other than the HME web orders, because of the custom customization, there's so much customization. Almost all the apps upgrade gracefully. The next question is from Lisa. Any suggestions for protecting patient information on an externally facing site? Role-based security seems weak to me. Huh. Well, I guess to me I, I, I don't see role-based security as weak. Uh, one of the things I've incorporated into the application is in the password, I've used the regular expression that IronSpeed allows so that you know you have to have one uppercase letter, you have to have one lowercase letter, you have to have one special character. It has to be so many characters long before you can save that password. Uh, I, I think we've, we've taken as many precautions as we can to make it as safe as possible. Um, I can't think of any way to make it harder to hack into. The other piece of Iron Speed is, is that when the URLs and everything are, are built on the fly when you go to pages, they're all encrypted. And then also with Iron Speed, they have the built-in they've taken care of the worries of SQL injection or, or any of those things. So I feel quite safe using IronSpeed on the 
on the outside because Iron Speed, the company, is, knows of the vulnerabilities out there and they've incorporated it when they're building the application to, to help protect you from that issue. I would, I would kind of question um, from a standard web application if you were building a web application, my guess is, is most folks forget all about even checking for SQL injection and I'd worry more about that. The next question is from Robert. He says, I want to quickly generate reports of all kinds with IronSpeed. Is there a quick report generator with source code that integrates with IronSpeed? Clarification, a report that is integrated with IronSpeed. So when we need specific reports done, we usually build a query or a view. And after we build the view that has all the information in the way that we want it, then we build the IronSpeed application or the page to present it from that view. So you would get your report from the view. Um, the other feature that IronSpeed has started to incorporate, um, I would hope that that'll get better, is that they also have charting now. It's kind of basic charting, but you can build uh, charts for a reporting type functionality as well. But to answer your question, we would use views and then write against that view with a page in IronSpeed and be able to present it that way. Nils asks, do you use any third-party components for creating reports as a complement to built-in IronSpeed Designer? I do not. Um, I'd love to, but uh, licensing and getting it purchased and things like that is kind of difficult. Lawan asks, regarding the question about searching all tables, you can deploy a stored procedure to the database that searches all tables and then use iron speed to display the results in a report. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, thank you. And then James says, can I convert my access database to iron speed? Yes. That's all the questions I have at the moment. Are there any others? Please send them through. Anybody sending? Ah, there we go. Uh, from Brian, can you play sound files? Hmm. Good question. Uh, I haven't. I haven't tried. I would assume yes, as long as as long as the server has the uh, the codex to uh, on the server where you're setting where you can view the file. I'm assuming that it would just download with the upload download feature. I would assume that it would download and you'd be able to view it. I haven't tried it though. I don't know. That's a good question. I'll have to go try that. Uh, Stephen asks, uh, you haven't answered my question about how long did it take for you to build what you have shown today? Sorry, Stephen, I must have lost that one because I remember seeing it somewhere. Oh, I don't remember the question. <laughs> sorry, wait, you don't because I never, I, never I never voiced it. I'm sorry, Stephen. He says, um, how long did it take for you to build what you have shown today? Every single application? Um, he doesn't clarify, but if, if you'll clarify for me, Stephen, I'll clarify for Wayne. Uh, the, so the HME web orders, I think, took six weeks with all the custom coding. Um, Cedar and Sid, we've had for probably seven years, and that's a constant change because of the way somebody wants the data presented. Um, to actually just do the application from scratch, uh, well, the SID application, I would say you could probably do probably in 
two weeks only because if you're going to say how long would it take to reproduce that with all the style sheets and the styles the way that that is, it's, that took quite a bit of time I think to do. It's not really the iron speed. The iron speed part would, you know, you could do in four or five days the entire app. It's, it's the manipulating of how you want the data and where you want the fields and, and that kind of thing. There is uh, there is one customization in the SID that we use on the uh, data network side to where we're bringing back the IPs. We're doing a query there in order to bring back the IPs in the right order, you know, from zero to the highest. Because of the dot, you have to use text for that field, not a number, so you got to manipulate that information to present. The Cedar, the new version of Cedar, I didn't show you the add and the edit in that, but instead of using the tabs, I was using the accordion feature in that. I've also added um, uh, some type ahead in the text boxes to where we can do similar to what IronSpeed has done in 10.03. So I wouldn't have to do that. I could just use out of the box for that, but even in Cedar, I could build I could build Cedar in a week easily. Okay, the next question I have is from Eddie. He says about IIS and server memory requirement. Is there a generic rule as of how many applications you can host in a single web server? And also, how do you calculate? How much memory you would need based on how many users will be logged into the web application? So I monitor it, but I have so many web servers that I have applications on that I haven't had to face that, that issue of running out of memory because I have so many servers. As a rule, I the IronSpeed applications don't take up any more memory than than regular web applications because it is just a web application. That said, you know, you always want to monitor your memory and resources on your servers based off of the applications you use. And there's not a fit all because you might have two applications that 300 people hit constantly for two of these applications, but then you might have a web server that has 100 apps on it, and only two or three people are hitting each application back and forth. So the memory and, and utilization and everything isn't you know being impacted. So I don't look at it as how many iron speed apps or how many web apps. What I look at is the total, you know, let, like the one server I showed you had 113 web applications. Those were web apps and IronSpeed apps on there. They're, they're together in that playground. So what I have to look at is what is the utilization and impact on that server. And when I put an app on and maybe 300 people start hitting it, maybe I start seeing a utilization. Well, then I know okay, I, I'm, maybe I've reached the limit of where I want to put applications, and now I need to bring up another server and start using it. So there's no, there's no set rule. You just have to go by what you have on there and how, how it's playing and make that determination. The next question I have is from Jean-Pierre. He says, data for healthcare is very sensitive. Is there a way to encrypt access database to avoid the database being read by just anybody? Well, so you said access database. So first thing that comes to mind is the access database. Where is it located and how can people get to it? So if it's in a file share, then you're permissioning it off of who can get to it, right? If it's um, if you're going to have the iron speed front end, then you're permissioning it, 
permissioning it through through Iron Speed, whether it's Active Directory or the rule-based security. Um, I don't know how to answer that any further than that. I don't know. I, I don't use Access that much anymore. It's probably been five years since we've really done anything with Access, but there's a lot of old or older uh, access databases that are still used today that people are using and and what we've tried to do is on the ones that we know about that are real high level you know try to put them in the SQL where they're backed up and where there is a better security uh, framework around. I know that didn't answer your question but that's the best answer I have. The next question I have is from Brian. Are your Word docs being saved as blobs or in map directories? I'm putting them all in the database. So I believe they're actually image is the type. OK. The next question I have is from John. Does IronSpeed generate a web service in the same manner that it generates a web app? What is a web service? So when I mentioned about the web service, um, we have many web services and we have web services servers to where when we need to provide specific information or get information from somewhere, we build what's called a web service. And the web service, all it is is kind of like a broker to where it says, okay, I want to know Wayne Hussey's manager. So I can leverage a web service that can go look up Wayne Hussey's manager and return that information back to my web application. So IronSpeed doesn't build the web service. You have to build the web service on your own and then you just leverage that web service that you built outside of IronSpeed in with the application. It wouldn't be any different than building a web application and then having a web service, you would be doing the same thing. You would, you would bring the web service and incorporate it in your application using Visual Studio so that you could take advantage of the functionality. And then Jim asks, have you had experience using the IronSpeed Designer encrypt decrypt functionality? Yes, I have. Um, I don't know what to say on that. I mean, I've used it. Um, from within IronSpeed, I've, I've had no issues with it. Um, before IronSpeed had it, I had a DLL that I would run that would encrypt and decrypt. But then IronSpeed built it into the application, so I didn't have to mess with that. OK, that was, oh, no, it's not our last question. Here's our last question. Where might I look to find out how to create a web service? <laughs> I, just, I would just uh, Google it on Google and just say, you know, just start out by, since, since you haven't built a web service, I would just Google for, um, on a video, maybe even, it would probably even come up in YouTube, on how to create a simple web service. And that would, um, you could probably start from there and you'd figure out how to build a web service. You'd figure out how to incorporate it into the web application. And just a note, when, when you have IronSpeed open, there's a little button up at the top where you can click Visual Studio, and it'll open up your Visual Studio for that application, build the solution and everything for you. And then from there, you could bring in your web service. OK, everyone, that was our last question. And we're, we're at 10 after the hour now. So if you have any more questions, this is last call. Please get them in as quickly as you can. And we'll wait a minute or so for, for you to type furiously if there are any more questions. And I'd like to you know just take a moment and uh, thank all of you for attending today's seminar. I hope. Um, I've opened up a few new ideas for you. I know that I've come away with a couple of ideas now that I'm, I want to go play with based off of some of the questions that were asked today. So thank you for being so interactive.
Okay, and here's our last question from Eddie. Do you use only IronSpeed Designer to build these web applications, or is there any third-party tool that you use? So for me, being a web engineer, putting third-party tools on a server always adds a complexity and the, you know, a licensing and uh, legality, you know, process go through and then and then purchasing. So as a rule, almost every IronSpeed app I use, I try to have IronSpeed do it for me. That doesn't mean that every time it's going to work out that way because there's, you know, other easier ways to to add that functionality rather than than building it if IronSpeed doesn't have it. But, you know, third-party tools, you know, there's a number of third-party tools that just work great with IronSpeed. And there's other MVPs that um, use the third-party tools um, quite a bit. And they don't have any problems using third-party tools. So, you know, it's just a matter of um, purchasing and incorporating it into the application. Just remember that IronSpeed is still a, a VB app or a C-sharp app. So anything that, from a third-party standpoint that you can use with C-sharp or VB as a, de as a developer, you can just incorporate into the application. IronSpeed just. Oh, I was I'm just going to say that was all of our questions. I'm sorry. That's okay. I was just going to add, you know, one other thing. You know, maybe a way to look at IronSpeed is is that it's it's a way of um, building and presenting the application. Maybe 80 percent of the time, all the CRUD work as the term CRUD um, is built for you and you don't have to hard code it or hand code it. And then you can expand on that just like you would any other web application that you're developing, whether C sharp or VB, you know, in Visual Studio. Um, our speed is, you know, never tried to take the role of what Visual Studio does. You know, Visual Studio does what it does, you know, quite well. And IronSpeed does what it does quite well. So, you know, it's, you could kind of consider Visual Studio as a third-party tool that you can use with IronSpeed. So that sounds like um, all the questions are done, and, and um, I just once again want to thank you for attending and hope to talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone.